state of the art. What's going on everybody? This is your boy Triple Six coming at you with the holiday Memorial Day holiday comic book haul video. So you know I appreciate everybody checking a brother out, man, on that last video. Just getting a great response. Um so you know I thought I would do something uh, for you guys and come out with a video a little bit sooner than what I usually do. So, you know, I thought Memorial Day weekend would be a great time to come out with a surprise special video. So let's just get right into this, man. Uh, check it out. First up, we've got Doom. Issue number one. Uh, it seems people are talking about this a little bit. Uh, this is cover artist done by Sanford Green. I thought this was a dope little story. Uh, I didn't think it was as spectacular as a lot of people are making it out to be, but it was an interesting little story. Um, this book has kind of blown up on the secondary market. Market People are hype. So definitely check it out, man, if you guys are interested in this. Um, anyway, the story starts off, I'm not gonna give away too much of it, but the story starts off with Bloom, Doom, battered and beat up floating in space and Valeria Richards is out looking for him she picks him up brings him back uh, does some things to boost his power so that he can fight Galactus Galactus is the big bad so this you know this might be something you want to check out man I thought it was decent it was decent anyway with that I want to show some books that I picked up on Free Comic Book Day. So starting out, check this out. I grabbed this Bark Asylum. Also grabbed this Young Jedi Adventures. As well as this Absolute Power. Issue number one. The Conan Battle of the Black Stone. Blood Hunt. Issue number one. I also picked up this One Piece Aces story, the manga. Is this the first One Piece uh, in American comics? I don't know, but needless to say, brother picked up a couple of these. Also picked up this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue number one. Uh, we've got our first appearance of this. Who is the Night Watcher? And you guys remember when I said I would come back this, come back to this? This is that Tuskegee Airs, Flames of Destiny, issue number one. This is by Marcus Williams. So the reason why I said I would come back to this, uh, because Marcus Williams is going to be somebody that the mainstream is going to come to know. Uh, he's got some things that's coming out. One of those things was on the free comic book day. He did this cover for I Lie Popeye, issue number one. He's going to be one of the artists uh, in this run. So, you know, needless to say, brother picked up a couple of these, man. 
Just nice. Nice. Also, you're going to want to keep an eye out. I think it's next week, New Comic Book Day Wednesday, that uh, new Spider-Woman that's going to be coming out, where they're going to be introducing uh, in comic book continuity uh, that black Spider-Woman that was in the uh, Miles uh, Morales animated movie, Into the Spider-Verse. She's going to be making her appearance in comics. And he's doing a cover for that. So that should be pretty dope as well. So keep your eye out. If you didn't know, now you know. So let me grab my next stack. So you guys remember in, that, uh, in my last haul video, right, I was saying that I almost scrapped some of the books that I was going to show because I wanted to show what I picked up at that dealer show a couple weekends ago. Uh, well, here we go. You know, I found some dope stuff. But anyway, let's get started. Talked about this before. This is that Marvel The Lost Generation, issue number 12. Um, if you're curious about it, go check out my past videos. There's a first appearance in this. Or, you know, just go do your research. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it. This was just a cover buy for me. This is Coyote, issue number 10. I believe Todd McFarlane uh, had his first uh, first time he did a drawing, uh, did a cover or something for a comic book. It was in this in this run. Anyway, this came out in 1985, man. Wow. Another nice little pickup. I've shown this before. This is Will Eisner's The Spirit, issue number seven. Just a dope, dope. Darwin Cook cover. There's no spec on this. I just like this cover. This is Wildcats issue number four. Just a nice looking cover. In one of my previous haul videos, uh, not the last one, but I think the one before that, I showed a couple of books that I picked up from this. This is Trigger Man issue number one. This is the cover A. I'd shown a couple of variant covers. One I said was kind of hard to find. So this was a nice little pickup. I don't know why I'm getting caught up in this Scarlet. This is Scarlet issue number three from Jinx World. Just an interesting variant cover that I saw. Or like I said, this is out of that Jinx World. This was like uh, later on. I think it might have been a different story. But anyway, it was still Bendis and Malieve coming together. But uh, I had also shown out of Icon uh, Publishing a couple of Scarlet uh, issues that I picked up. This is issue number three. Issue number six. Just some nice pickups. I guess I'm on a Scarlet kick for some reason. So check this out. This is Iron Fist, issue number seven. This came out in 2017. This cover is by Jeff DeCall. Just a nice looking little book. Speaking of a book that I keep picking up, uh, this is X-Force, issue number two. You know, especially if it says near mint, mint. <laughs> Let's go grab this, man. Uh, this is the second appearance of Deadpool. You know, that first appearance is out of sight, out of range for a lot of people. So they're, people are now picking up his second appearance. Just a nice little book. Oh, check this out. I had said that uh, I wanted to start picking up some other artists that could potentially pop later on in the future. Um, Michael Turner was one of them. So, like I said, this dealer's show, I was pulling these out the long boxes, man. Uh, this is Phantom, Fathom, issue number three. Michael Turner picked up two of those. But what really made me start grabbing these, man, is when I started running into these newsstands. We got Fathom, issue number five. 
like I said, new stand. Dope. Also got issue number seven in a new stand. As well as issue nine. They also had issue 10. Look at that. Newsstand. Nice. This is just a cover buy. Um, I had seen it online but never purchased it. I'm uh, glad to run into this in the wild. This is High Impact, issue number one. This came out in 1995, man. This is a, just a dope chromium cover. This cover is by Ricky Car Carrello. Carrello? Carrero? Anyway, just a nice little buy. Uh, it doesn't go for anything. Needless to say, brother picked up two of these. Speaking of some good girl slash bad girl art, we've got... Grim Fairy Tales, issue number two out of Xenoscope. Just a dope Jamie Tyndall cover. Nice. Speaking of nice, got this in a little four issue set that this guy had. I was only in, interested in issue number one, but check this out. We got JSA Classified, issue number one. The Adam Hughes. Nice. Nice. Like I said, this was a four shoe little lot. This is issue two. Issue three. And issue four. Nice. Still can be found in them long boxes. Uh, at a cheap price, man. Check this out. We got True Love. Issue number one. This came out in 1986. Dave Stevens goodness. Look at that. Like I said, you can still find these, man. Just nice. Brother got that for $5. Dope. Dope little pickup. Oh, and the books that got me hype at this little dealer's show. Check this out. First time ever getting this. Look at that, Forever People, issue number one. This came out in 1971. First full appearance of Dark Side. Just a dope, dope cover. Speaking of a dope cover and a nice little pickup, how about Mr. Miracle, issue number one. This came out in 1971. This cover is by Jack Kirby. And Vince Coletta, this is the first appearance of Mr. Miracle. And since I didn't say it, this is also Jack Kirby goodness. <laughs> nice. Like I said, this was just, just picked up some dope books at this little dealer show. Speaking of a dope pickup, check this out. We've got Superman Adventures Presents Supergirl Adventures, issue number 21. This came out in 1998. Yeah, 1998. Some Bruce Tim. And what makes this a great pickup is I got this on uh, a newsstand, man. Newsstand. So I went online after I bought this to see what this was going for. And uh, to my surprise, there were no newsstands being sold. There was only the Direct. And I was surprised to see that. Only the Direct. Uh, I went to see what if any is sold. And there was like a 9.8 that sold for like, uh, I want to say 200. Uh, I was surprised. I don't know if, is this hard to find? I don't know. But uh, needless to say, brother was glad to find this, man. Just a dope, dope little pickup. Speaking of a dope pickup, check this out. 
Brother finally found him a hawk. Issue number 16. We got the first appearance of the Red She-Hawk. Nice. This cover is by Ian Churchill. And the book that I was really glad to find, uh, he had this on his wall. I've developed a nice little relationship with this guy. Uh, he's a really cool dude. But uh, this book has dropped considerably online. Uh, this is Star Wars issue number three. First appearance of Dr. Afra, And even that fourth print, fifth print, I think it's the fourth print, that purple cover has dropped considerably. But this was just a nice little get, man. I was ecstatic to find this in the wild and at a just discount price, man. Great pickup. And the last little thing that I want to show that I got at this dealer show, um, I've mentioned it before. Uh, if you guys aren't checking out uh, X Men '97, man, it it ended. Uh, it was just a great low run of episodes. Anyway, uh, when it was revealed who the true big bad was, these books just blew up, you know. I hadn't even been picking up any X-Men, you know, just hadn't. But, you know, this uh, this show has even had me grabbing stuff on the long boxes, man, reminiscing. And uh, I never read these. I wasn't collecting it this time. But uh, the guy had a nice little lot of these. He almost had the complete story arc. And uh, got it at a nice little price. Anyway, check this out. We've got X-Men, issue number 52. This is the cameo appearance of the big bad, Bastion. And like I said, I didn't know anything about Bastion, but the storyline was dope on the show. And uh, these started trending on the secondary market. These went from virtually dollar bin, 50 cent books to 15, 12, 15 20 dollar books raw. You know, people were on them. So, like I said, I got a nice little run. Anyway, I wanted to start off with the first cameo and first appearance. And what makes it even a little nicer is that these are newsstands. Nice. These came out in 96. So, everything he had, they were all newsstands. He didn't have the complete... Uh, arc. There's a couple of issues missing here and there, but uh, brother's going to definitely pick those up so I can read it. Uh, there's a bunch of directs, but I'm being a little snob now. You know, I want them all in newsstand. <laughs> you know, no, you're just kidding. But yeah, I do want these. Uh, they're not too expensive, I don't think. But uh, needless to say, uh, Generation. Generation X, this is issue number 26, 27, newsstand, also got 29, obviously 28's missing, 29, issue number 30, and issue number 31, we've got X-Men 80, or 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, and we've got Uncanny, 346, Wolverine 115 116 118 and cable number 45 and uh, like I said this little story arc was called Zero Tolerance just a dope dope uh, 
series on X-Men 97. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. Like I said, there's a couple of issues that are missing from this zero tolerance, but uh, I will pick them up so that I can read it. And that is uh, everything from the dealer show. Let me grab my next stack. Like I said, man, um, you know, the X-Men show really had me hyped, so well, I've been picking up a few things out of the long boxes. I might have shown this before, grabbed another one. This is that Uncanny X-Men issue number 200. This is uh, Magneto in the costume that kind of blew up for a minute because when he became the leader of the X-Men on the show, he was wearing this costume, so people started buying this. Found that, as well as issue number 240 and 241, Inferno, if you know, you know, Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen. Look at Sinister, nice. And another book that uh, knew nothing about, but thanks to the show, we've got X-Men 185, this came out in 2006. This is the first appearance of Gambit as one of the four horsemen of Apocalypse as Death. I believe his cameo is 184. This is the first full, but uh, even this caught a little heat. So, you know, I was glad to pick this up out in the wild. Just a dope little book. Had to read it. So I don't know. I guess I was just feeling a little nostalgic. We've got Enter the Lost World of the Warlord. Issue number 117. This came out in 1987, man. Just some Mike Grell goodness. Dope little book. Speaking of a cover buy, you know, this is that design variant style. We've got Dark Crisis, issue number three. I believe this is the first appearance of the Red Canary. You know, our brother be on those Xenoscopes. We've got Grim Fairy Tales, issue number 50. Just some Josh Burns goodness. I think this came out in 2021. And this came out in 2020, Grim Fairy Tales, issue number 42, Baba Yaga Returns, Josh Burns. Nice. That's a beautiful cover right there. Beautiful. All this taste be everywhere, man. You know, I just be on a lot. I like a lot of different things. Check this out. We've got Star Wars, issue number one, the... What is this? The movie homage? Luke Skywalker. Nice. Nice. Speaking of dope, remember when this was a thing? <laughs> Not so much now. The hype is down. Jonathan Majors has killed his career opportunities. But this was hot when everybody was geeking on Kang the Conqueror. Anywhere, this is kind of like uh, all the different Kang variants. This book was hot for a minute. Now, you know, brother's pulling out the discount bins. We've got Avengers, issue number two. Another book that has kind of died off. Marvel's just killed the spec for a lot of stuff. This is The Astonishing Ant-Man, issue number six. First appearance of Cassie Lang, a stature. Nice. Speaking of a dope little pickup, this is Rose issue number 17. This came out in 2019. This cover is by Jeff Schultz. This is just an awesome little Calvin and Hobbes homage. Calvin and Hobbes. This was a thing, like I said, probably back in the... 80s early 90s as well 
I don't know if it's a, even a thing anymore. But like I said, it was back then. This was a dope little pickup. Uh, I just picked this up because it just reminded me of a certain artist. I'm sure if you guys uh, know me, uh, you've seen the things I've shown, you know right away who this reminded me of. This is Voltron, Defender of the Universe, issue number four. It reminds me of a Darwin Cook. It's not Darwin Cook, but uh, this came out in 2008. This cover is by Clement Suave and Joel Singwin. Like I said, just uh, give me a Darwin Cook vibe, man. So I just thought this was a beautiful pickup. Speaking of some, well, let me move this. Speaking of a beautiful pickup, check this out. Well, let me turn it like this. Brother gonna have some landscape covers for you guys in this hall. This is War of the Realms, issue number one. This came out in 2019. This is a one in 10, man. This cover is by Greg Horn. Uh, just a beautiful cover. Uh, I guess there was a time when they were coming out with covers, incentive covers, where they were doing, uh, well, I don't think it's very prevalent today, but back in the 80s, 70s, 80s, this was a thing, man. Cats would have an artist airbrush, airbrush scenes on the side of their vans. Anyway, just a dope cover. First time finding one of these. I'm not sure if I showed this in my last fall video. If I did, get to see it again. <laughs> I do that, don't I? Anyway, up next we got Detective Comics, issue 1055. This is a 1 in 25, just a dope fornis cover. Speaking of dopeness, check this out. We got Crypt of Shadows, issue number 1. I missed this when it first came out, so I was glad to find it, run into this, and you know, got this on the cheap. This is, like I said, that Crypt of Shadows, issue number one, the Bjorn Barons cover. Nice. Nice. Speaking of a nice little pickup for little and nothing, we've got the Chimera, the, the Chimerian. Man Eaters of Zimbula, issue number one. This is published by Blaze Comics. This came out in 2020. This is a one in 50, man, by the artist Paquet. Paquet? Paquet? Anyway, just a nice little pickup. And speaking of a dope pickup, check this out. When you can pull this out, the discount bins. Nice! We got Supergirl, issue number one. DC Universe, man. Nice. And speaking of a book I never thought I would run into, check this out. We've got Hack Slash, issue number eight. A Scotty Young variant. This thing is not perfect, but... For a book that I never thought I would see out there in the wild, just a nice little pickup. There's a pretty serious spawn tick, but like I said, in the discount bins, you can't leave it. You got to pick it up. Sometimes, you know, uh, I've never grabbed this, but sometimes when the price is right, you just got to get it. Check this out. We've got Miss Marvel, issue number one from 1977. This is the first appearance of Carol Danvers as Miss Marvel. Like I said, this is a book that uh, when she was hot, I was definitely not looking at this, but now, you know, prices are down. This is a buyer's market, and uh, for the price, I couldn't beat it, couldn't pass it up, had to get it. And speaking of a dope little pickup, check this out. This book has been expensive forever and a day, but like I said, prices are down. Check this out. Brother finally got this. 
We've got Star Wars Jedi vs. the Sith, issue number one. This came out in, what, 2001? We got the first appearance of Darth Bane. Nice! Finally got this. I have issue two through six. I had those for a while. I think I got those a couple years ago. Easy a couple years ago. Maybe like three years ago, man. So to finally find the issue number one at a decent price, nice little pickup. So let me grab my next stack. So my brother talked about in his last haul video, or maybe the one before that, about comics with an anime vibe. So I've been looking at those, man. But, uh, one such title that uh, I was interested in, and I'll show you the book that got me looking at uh, other issues in that run. Check this out. These are just cover buys for me. This is Spy Boy, the manga affair. I believe these books came out in like 1999 or they started around there. Um, this is like issue 13.2. Brother doing that doubles thing. I picked up two of those. Also picked up Spy Boy issue number 12. Just a dope cover, man. Like I said, these are inexpensive. They don't go or any, they don't go for anything. But uh, they just caught my eye. Especially this issue number three. Look at that. When you look at these things online, man, these things are beat to hell. I don't know what people were doing with these, but trying to find this in a high grade, good luck. But, uh, you know, I did all right. They're not high grade, but they're decent, just nice looking covers. But the cover that had me looking at this title, these titles, check this out. I think it was on Long Story Short. He showed these. So naturally, you know, brother had to pick up a couple of these. We've got Spy Boy, issue number nine. Joe Chiodo, just a beautiful black and white noir, noir type of book. Like I said, just a beautiful, beautiful book. So, of course, brother picked up a couple of these. Just a nice looking book, man. Let me grab my next stack. So you're about to see a theme. We're showing, like I said, these animation style covers. Check this out. You know I was eventually going to get this. We've got that Darkling, issue number one. Came out this year, the Bruce Tim variant. You can look at this online, man. People are asking a little bit for this book. But, you know, you guys are down with brothers, so... If you're interested in these, check out Stadium Comics. Last time I checked, they still were selling these. And you'd be able to pick them up at a decent price. A lot better than what people are asking for these things online. But of course, you know, brother had to pick up a couple. Bruce Tim, uh, you know, like I said before, man, I'm trying to look at these artists that had the potential to pop in the future. And some of Bruce Tim's covers are already going for crazy prices, so it's not too far-fetched to be thinking ahead, man. Stay ahead of the curve. Just a beautiful book. And another artist that I'm looking at, and I told you I was coming back to these landscape variants. Check this out. We're just going to come at them like this. We got Aquaman. Issue number 37. Darwin Cook. And as I started picking these up, man, I really sat down one night and I was looking at these images. And like I said, it just really dawned on me, man. If uh, I was watching an animation, I paused it. That's what this looks like, man. He did, he did an excellent job of capturing a still frame from an animated movie or TV show. I mean, this 
this is straight up a cartoon. Just beautiful, man. And I can see why he liked doing these landscapes. Just look at that. That is, man, that's fantastic. Anyway, also picked up Supergirl issue number 37. Look at that. And this is probably hard to get in a high grade, especially with that black uh, border uh, right there on the back of the cover or on the spine. Really? Man. Also picked up Superwoman or Superman Wonder Woman issue number 14. Look at that, man. Look at that cover. That is fantastic. And if you don't think so, look at this next Wonder Woman cover. This is off the chain. Look at the action that is captured in that wide angled shot. Wonder Woman has captured one of these thugs in her lasso and threw them up against the columns and the columns are crashing down. Just, uh, just a beautiful book, man. Dope. And needless to say, your brother picked up two of these. Just a really good looking book. It really is. Also picked up Fatal, Fatale, Fatal, issue number 15. These came out in 2013. Again, Darwin Cook. Uh, this is the ghost variant. Like I said, man, I grabbed these. I snatched these up online. These are still hot, very available. This is something you like. Pick them up. Got another pulp type noir look to it. Just some books that potentially might spike in the future. And a book, check this book out that I'm getting ready to show, man. I was surprised when I saw this. With the people that I watch, I have never seen anyone show this. And keep in mind, I'm just talking about the videos that I watch. <laughs> I'm not saying that, you know, Nobody's ever shown these before. I'm not going to say that anymore. I'm just saying the guys that I watch, the, the channels that I watch. I'm surprised I've never seen this, especially how hype people are on Darwin Cook. But check this out. I was surprised when I ran into this. This is the Phantom. Issue number one. This came out in 2016. Just a dope. Dope Darwin Cook cover. And I picked up a couple of these as well. Like I said, I was surprised when I ran into these and I've never seen anybody show these before. Anyway, uh, if this is something you guys like. You might want to look into it because I think uh, these, two color these two covers have potential. Let me grab my final stack. So, when I'm out there online, you know, just digging, man. You never know what I'm going to run into, what I'm going to find. So, check this out. When I saw these covers, I was just fascinated by the art. Um... Um, but when I got to digging more into it to find out what these were, the story fascinated me. So when I got these, brother had to read it. And uh, I just thought it was a fascinating story. The interiors are in black and white. But check it out. Let me set it up here first. This is Gypsy Rose, issue number one. Even the publisher, uh, the name had me uh, intrigued. This is my Comics Conspiracy. This came out in, what, 2003, 2004? 
Just a dope Ron Andrian cover. Just beautiful. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was just the idea of this gypsy woman, the demon behind her. Maybe it's her waist size. <laughs> I don't know. Just talking shit. You know me. It's what I do. But just, uh, man, this is a fantastic cover, man. And this, I read the synopsis. And then when I read the story, check this out. So during the time of Christ's crucifixion, there was like, or as the story says, there were four nails that were used. The family came into the her family. One of the women of the band, gypsy band, she was at the crucifixion. She took the fourth nail. And apparently these nails were used to seal the demons in hell. So they couldn't overrun the earth. But a couple get out and they chase the bearer of this nail. Trying to get it. They need the final nail so they can open up the gates of hell and invade earth. And it's all about her staying on the move, you know, running from these demons. And it kind of gave me that vibe of, uh, you remember that movie back in the 90s? Uh, uh, Tales from the Crypt, uh, Demon Knight with Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett, she was Jada Pinkett back then, but Jada Pinkett, Pinkett Smith and Billy Zane. Man, I watched that movie I don't know how many times, man. I loved that show, that movie back in the 90s. That was just such an awesome story to me, man. Love that story. Anyway, it has those vibes. You know, that storyline was almost the same thing. I can't remember what it was they had from Christ's crucifixion, whether it was a piece of the cross. I think it might have been a nail also. And it had his blood on it, Jesus' blood on it. Anywhere, anyway, that's kind of like what this is. And uh, it was a really good story. I enjoyed it. I mean, it's dated. I always say that about these 90s books. But I enjoyed it. It was right up my alley. And uh, I was surprised. I'm glad I picked this up when I did because people are asking some a little bit for this. You know, they're asking some money for this. I was surprised. Anyway, brother picked him up two copies of this issue one. Like I said, this might be cover A. And this is these are the images got me really intrigued about this book. Check this out. This is the cover B. Also by Ron Adrian. That is a dope cover. That cover is fantastic. Fantastic. Like I said, I picked up two of those. This is issue two. This is either the cover A or the cover B. This cover is by Gabrielle Guzman. I think that might be the cover A, and this is the cover B. Look at that. Man, look at that. Off the chain. Those are two fantastic covers. Just some great covers in this run. There's only two issues from what I could find. And like I said, go look for yourself, man. People are asking a little bit for this. I don't know if this is just a... This might be a low, low print run. I don't know why people are thinking that this is... Exp I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how people come up sometimes with their prices. I don't know where they get these numbers from, but... This might be one to, uh, if you find it, you might want to grab it. You never know. Just a nice little pickup. Anyway, Gypsy Rose, issue number one and two from Conspiracy Comics. Speaking of a dope little pickup, I've been looking at these for a while, just waiting on the white the right price check this out this is carnage issue number six this came out in 2022 uh, this was an NYCC exclusive comic-con you know this cover of course is by peach momoko 
Um, I spoke on Peach quite a bit. You guys know what I think, how I feel about her work. And I just think it's covers like this, man, that uh, people are going to forget about. And uh, new collectors down the road in the future, they're going to come into this game and they're going to be intrigued by some of these stunning images that were created uh, by Momoko. Especially a lot of these younger kids coming up. They're going to be well versed in anime and manga and they're going to be shocked, surprised, you know, when they come across some of Momoko's early stuff. Who knows who she's going to be in the future, how big she's going to get. Maybe, maybe not. No telling. But I think it'll be covers like this that people will be searching for, that they'll, they're, they're going to want to add to their collection. That's just my opinion. I might be completely wrong. I usually am. <laughs> but uh, this is just a dope, dope cover. And anyway, I picked up two of these. Love that cover. I knew when I saw it, I was eventually going to get that. Speaking of which, check this out. This is the assignment. This is a hard case crime, the assignment from Titan Comics. This came out in 2017. Just uh, ever since, uh, you know, brother's been buying the girl with the, uh, the, 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 the girl who handcuffed Houdini, uh, the girl who electrified Tesla. And I just showed uh, the variant or the cover A to the Trigger Man. And I showed the variants a couple hauls ago. I've been looking at these books, man. Um, these noir or detective type books. They got some fantastic covers. And uh, as a matter of fact, I got a nice little, uh, nice little lot of issue one, issue two. In the book that I was looking for, and uh, I believe Mr. Long Story Short covered this on uh, one of his episodes. I think this, talking about how this is another hard book to find, a very low print run, maybe something like 5,000 to 7,000. Um, uh, this is just a nice little pickup, man. So uh, keep your eyes open on this stuff, man. Just these interesting covers, man, I think are starting to catch a little heat on the secondary market because people are looking for things that are not easily found or just things that have some dope artwork that aren't uh, necessarily trending right now but have that potential. And speaking of books that have this like pulp, noir, detective crime type stories, or artwork check this out i was surprised when i ran into this another one of those books i've never seen anybody talk about that i'm following this is wormwood the last battle um, this came out in 2010 this is issue number two this cover is by juan jose uh just it's obvious what attracted me to this cover <laughs> <laughs> just a dope little book I'm not exactly sure what the symbolism is of the rabbit rabbit with a strawberry in his mouth uh, I'm sure there's some symbolism here there usually is think about follow the follow the white rabbit you know that white rabbit symbolism um, I mean it just it's obviously a dope cover, uh, just beautiful stuff. And uh, like I said, this is from Avatar, Avatar Press. This is a convention exclusive that was limited to a thousand. And that was printed on the cover. Can you see that? Let's see. Well, I don't know how well this is going to show up, but limited to a thousand. And her brother found two of these. Nobody's looking for this stuff. 
I was able to pick these up on the cheap. I think there was four issues in this, four or five issues, and those those other issues also were out at conventions, also limited to a thousand. But for me, this is the best cover out of all those. I don't know if this is going to be something that I want to read one of these days. Um, we'll see. Considering this is written by Garth Ennis, so it's potential, potential that I might want to check this out. We'll see in time. Anyway, this is Chronicles of Wormwood, The Last Battle. Chronicles. I think I said Wormwood the first time, but this is Chronicles of Wormwood, The Last Battle. Issue number two. All right, we are winding down to my last couple of books. Check this out. Speaking of a beautiful book, man, look at that. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. We've got, let me see. It's on the back of the book. It has one of those certificates of authenticity. This was dropped at Wizard World Philadelphia. Uh, this was, this is a limited edition limited to what 250 no this is limited to 500 so just a nice little pickup and this is by the cover artist Ebas E B A S I've shown a couple of his books before in the past but anyway like I said this is just a beautiful Variant cover. Uh, in case I didn't, in case I didn't say, this is Witchblade issue number eighty-three. I just thought that was a fantastic image right there. So, you know I me, mean? this is right in my wheelhouse. Brother had to pick this up, man. Speaking of a book in a brother's wheelhouse, man, this cover that I'm about to show right here is just off. The literal chain, man. This cover is cold blooded. Check this out. We've got Ursa Minor, Lost Girls, the trade paperback containing issues, I want to say seven and eight of this little story arc. This came out, what, in 2023? This cover is by Brian Peterson. This thing was limited to a hundred. Just a dope, dope book, man. Look at this cover. Look at that. I mean, that is just, that is a beautiful drawing. I mean, they did an outstanding job on this, man. Just the curves, the, the, the clothing, the design of it, uh, the colors. I mean, this is this really good. Really good. Got her on a version of the General Lee for all those of you 80s kids. You know what I'm talking about? The General Lee, Dukes of Hazard, Daisy Duke being turned into a vampire nice nice just a dope dope little cover man speaking of dope covers beautiful artwork check this out i was glad to finally pick this up this is grim fairy tales issue number 101 out of zenoscope comics this came out in 2014 just a beautiful art germ cover man look at that just nice nice and speaking of a dope cover that is just nice look at this man vampirella fairy tales issue number two art adams man look at that that is what you call Art Adams goodness. That's what we want to see, dog. Right there. 
Not the little half body, big head. Some are calling it the bobblehead. <laughs> the bobblehead covers. You know, some of those are good. I ain't gonna lie. You know, brothers bought him some, but that right there is what we want to see. Look at that. Anyway, this came out in what? 2014. Just a dope cover by Art Adams for Dynamite Comics. That is Junior Walker Dynamite. <laughs> Oh, man. Speaking of some more cold-blooded covers, man, I just never thought I would buy from this dude's store because he's expensive. But I find myself looking. I picked up a couple things. Check this out. We've got Uncanny X-Men issue number one. This came out in 2016. This cover is by J. Scott Campbell. Just a beautiful cover, man. I had never seen it. And then, of course, after I bought it off his store, then I started seeing him online. And, uh, you know, it went for about the same price. But I was on his store because I was looking for a thing, couple of things. But when I saw this, this was a must-get. Check this out. This is what I went on there to get. This is Catwoman. Number one, the 80th anniversary issue. This came out in 2020. Just a beautiful cover by J. Scott Campbell, man. I mean, they printed variant covers into infinity for this book. There are a million different covers. Anything and everything by anybody and everybody, but this, you know, this thing isn't in doing. Ah, this thing is not doing anything on the secondary market, but I don't know, man. This thing, considering J. Scott Campbell, I think a lot of his covers that pop always depict Mary Jane, the Black Cat, but this is a fantastic cover, man. This thing is off the chain. And speaking of off the chain, check this out. You know I had to do it. I had to do it. When I saw this cover, I waited. I wanted to see what it was going to go for. I wanted to see how crazy. Uh, I wanted to see how crazy people were going to get. I waited until, like, I almost forgot about it. And then I thought about it again. And the last time I was in my LCS, two weeks before this thing came out, I asked uh, my LCS if they were going to get it. And they said, yeah, we, we got one. I was like, well, has anybody reserved it? And I was shocked. They said no. I was like, what? Well, put me down. They were like, well, we'll give you first buyer's right when it drops. If you want it, it's yours. You can check it out. It's yours if you want it. The book I'm talking about that dropped this week, you know I had to do it. Look at that. We've got Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider. Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider number one. The Jenny, the Jenny Frizen 1 in 100 Virgin Variant. Just nice, man. Nice. This is a beautiful cover. Of course, I got multiples of the trade dress, but like I said, you know, uh, I had to get this. I was shocked that nobody reserved it. My LCS, they only got one. I don't know how many are out there. I see people are buying them up online. But uh, in time, I mean, they put out a lot of covers for this. So that's going to bring the value down. Um, there's a lot of, there's, 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 I think there's a lot of exclusives for this. As well as there were a lot of, a lot of just a lot of covers. I know there's the thank you variant that's doing all right on the secondary market. There's quite a few. 
Um, but needless to say, this is just a beautiful cover, and her brother had to do it. And speaking of beautiful covers for my last two books, check this out. I've been looking at these for a long time, long time, and I finally just gave up. I'm not going to find these in the wild. This one, this is not an expensive book, this first one. So I had to pick it up because clearly they were a set, and you'll see what I mean in a minute, but look at this. This is Ursa Minor, Ursa Minor, issue number one. This came out in 2012 from Big Dog, Inc. Just a beautiful Natalie Sanders variant. Might not even be a variant. This might be what they came out, what she came out with, what Ursa Minor came out with. No, this is a variant. Uh, take it back. Because I remember looking at some of the other covers back in the day. But this is just a beautiful cover. And usually I'm not into signatures, but my man signed it so cold, he put that swoop on the end of his N, Tom Hutchinson. Then I'm like, it just, you did, you did it up, bro. Because your T's, your H's, your, your swoop on that end, it just goes beautifully with this cover. So I don't even care. But the cover that I've been wanting this thing ever since I first got back in the game and I saw somebody show it, I just always figured I would find it in the wild. But that just was not to be. So when it came up at a price that I was willing to spend, I had to get it. Check this out. We've got Ursa Minor, issue number five. The Natalie Sanders variant. This thing is off the chain. In my opinion, this is the best cover she has ever ever done I know there are people out there who have said that that penny for your soul issue number one is her best cover but nah to me this hands down and yeah, she's done a lot this is the best variant cover she has ever done in my opinion this thing is off the reservation dog you can't even chain this down this thing is off the reservation. This thing is cold. Straight up cold blooded. Man, I am glad to finally add this bad boy to my collection. So, with that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this special Memorial Day haul video. Like I said, when you're spending time with family, giving thanks to those who have paid the ultimate price so that we can have these freedoms, so-called freedoms, however you want to put it, so that we can have the life that we live in this country. Hopefully you get to spend some time with the family, threw some good meat on the grill, had some great cookouts, you know, went camping, do what you, whatever it is that you do, man. And in the midst of that, your boy Triple Six, he wanted to give you a little something to watch as well. Again, man, I appreciate all the support. Man, the views that I've been getting, brothers, uh, subscribers are going up. I'm up to what, 149? My brother's almost about 150, dog. Approaching 200. I didn't think I'd get over 10, over 20. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing all right. Uh, that's definitely the goal to keep moving up. So with that, you know what time it is. This is your boy, Triple Six. Until next time, I'm out.